Jesus. We lift you up in this place, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now I know we're all here celebrating All Nations Sunday, and I think it's just like how Pastor says, that this is just how heaven's going to be. It's going to be full of every nation, all creation. We're all going to be lifting him up. So I wonder if we could get excited this morning as we begin to sing about heaven, as we begin to sing about that day, that we could just get excited and worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship with us. Jesus will be there. 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 Jesus
this morning. Today is All Nation Sunday, and we're happy uh, that you are here, and we're also happy that you're here to represent your country. Amen. Sister Allie is coming, and uh, I'm sorry, it was supposed to be Sister Janelle, wasn't it? Well, what, whatever y'all do. Praise the Lord, church. If you have a flag and you're taking part, please go to this side hall. Sister Andrea is going to uh, introduce our Parade of Nations. So I'm excited for today. Mike is probably good. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. All right, so our church has members who come from all of 25 different nations around the world. Today we're going to celebrate the diver diversity of not only Cross Creek, our church, but God's kingdom. As the song says, he's the God of every nation, all creation, and when we get to heaven, there will be no separation from the children of God. How many of you are thankful for that? Amen. So we will all be together on streets of gold, praising God. So join us as we celebrate the members of this church and the countries they all come from as we celebrate in our parade of nations. And then we're going to unite afterwards for a prayer that pastor is going to lead over um, every nation and all the world. Um, as Mark 16, 15 says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. So we have Valerie Capitan from Cameroon. I apologize if I say any names wrong. I'm doing my best. We have C Sierra Kazmi from Dominica. We have Adam Marino from Ecuador. Yeah, there you go. Give, give a clap, guys. We have Hacy Alvarado from El Salvador. We have Solomon Ashagari from Ethiopia. Marcus Forrester from Granada. Francisco Alvarado from Guatemala. Rodalyn Dasservines from Haiti. Cecile Sai from Ivory Coast. Delro Sister Little from Jamaica. Bleedy from Liberia. Cap, Brother Cap and the Miso Church from Myanmar. Catherine Walla from Nigeria. Marietta Chapana from Peru. Sister Vanessa and Zaire Robertson representing the United States of America. And then we have a few nations that are not here today, but we're going to go ahead and um, just give them honor. So we have Sister Vogler representing Mexico, Sister Overton, Australia, Sister Evelyn Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, Sister Catherine Long from Taiwan, and then the Tavares family representing Colombia and the United Kingdom. Let's give a hand for all these nations that our church represents. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wave your flags real big. Give God some praise this morning. He is the God of every nation, the God of all creation. We're going to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and give God some praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it to him. Sing it to him. 
worship praise. He's the God of every nation. He's the God of all creation. I'm going to bless his name. We're going to pray over every nation that is represented in our church this morning. But feel free to call out any nation that God brings to your heart because he's the God of the whole world. Amen. If the staff will come, we're going to lay hands on each one of these that are up here. And we're going to pray for revival in every nation of our world. The Bible said... Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Baptizing them in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this morning? Praise God. All the staff, if you would come right now, please don't make me call you out. Praise God. Amen. Let's lay hands on these and pray for them this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, hallelujah, for every country represented here. Ecuador, Lord, El Salvador, let the hand of the Lord be upon them. Let the anointing of God be upon them. Give them revival, God, in the name of Jesus. Not by our might and not by our power, but by your spirit this morning. I pray, Lord, hallelujah, give us revival in every country of the world. Hallelujah, take power, take dominion, take authority this morning, Father. Hallelujah, bless Honduras this morning. Bless Australia today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, not by our might or our power, but by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give us revival. Give us revival. Let sons and daughters be born in every nation. Hallelujah. 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 Will you lift up your voices and give God thanks this morning? Thank you, Lord, for revival. In every nation and every kindred. Praise God. Amen. They're going to sing a song and you guys are going to march out this morning. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. 25 nations represented in our local assembly. Amen. represented in our church with who was from that nation and also in their native tongue 
Amen. That said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. So we can't get it to work this morning, but we'll sing the song and you can march. Amen. And you can later go to the website and we'll put it up on the website. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. service they prepared food from different nations of the world and this year it's free amen so feel free to go out after church and you can travel around the world and sample food from every nation that's there amen, amen. hallelujah praise God happy for all of our guests today let's give our guests a round of applause this morning amen happy to have you in the house of the Lord and 
And if you have not filled out a connection card, we would appreciate it if you would fill one of these out. Amen. And there should be somebody in each. All my team captains, where are you at? They're out doing something else. Amen. Hasey's over here. Amen. Colette's over here. Please stand up. All of our team captains, there's three of you here. Amen. Hasey, can you stand, please? All right. Sister Israel, Sister uh, Colette over to my right. Bleedy is also. Amen. If you need one of these, please see one of them. We'd love to connect with you and let you know what's going on at the church. Amen. And it's just our way of staying in touch with you. Amen. So we would appreciate it if you would fill this out. Also on your way out today, we have a gift for you. We'd love to, amen, share a special gift with you. Just stop by the front desk and you can pick up that gift on your way out. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Janelle is coming with our announcements. God bless her as she comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. As you're preparing to give, you can listen to the following announcements for all of our new guests. Um, you can take out your calendars and mark some of these events. We'd love to see you um, here with us. Hyphen is happening tonight. That meeting will take place at my home. So if you're somebody between the ages of 18 and 30, this home fellowship group is for you. So come and see me if you would like some more information about that. Also, this upcoming Thursday, we're having picnic and praise. That's something that we really enjoy. It's a time of fellowship. This will be a potluck. So if you'd like to bring a dish or volunteer something, please see Sister Bleedy, um, and you can tell her what you're going to bring or ask what we have need of. On Friday and Saturday, September 20th and the 21st, we're having Purpose Institute. So if you're enrolled in a PI course, remember those dates and come out for your classes. And then finally, something really exciting is coming up for all of our hyphen at this church. It's a district retreat. It's going to be taking place October 4th through the 5th. It's an overnight. So if you'd like more information about that, you can come and see me. Um, and registration is live now. So again, if you're interested, come find me after service. Thank you. Amen. All the Jamaicans say amen. They all wanted to march, and I'd only let one of them march this year. Amen. Because they take over. <laughs> Praise God. But that's all right. That just means that you got to shout a little louder, dance a little harder. Amen. All the Jamaicans say amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. I think we're outnumbered. Amen. We're going to receive our tithe and offering and ask you to give. And today is a special offering for missions. Amen. World missions. Because we want to sponsor missionaries to take the gospel into all the world and fulfill the great command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So your giving will not go in vain. Every dollar that you put in the general fund today will go to world missions. Amen. Would you stand with me and let us pray over the offering? The ushers are coming. They'll sing a song and you can march and come and give. Amen. Father, we give you praise today for all that you have done and all that you are doing. We love you and appreciate all that you have blessed us with. And we bring a token of that. And we give it in exchange that the gospel may be preached in all the world. We pray that you would send missionaries where we cannot go, that you would open doors that we cannot open, and you would save souls which obviously we cannot save, by, not by our might or our power, but by your spirit today. I pray that you would bless this offering. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. God bless you as you march and come and give to the Lord this morning. Alpha and Omega.
You are worthy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. went to Indianapolis, our general superintendent stood up and he said, out of 216 nations of the world, we were in, I believe he said, 198 of them or something like that, 195, 198 different nations of the world, a missionary preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that excites me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. The scripture says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the Bible also tells us that when the gospel is preached in all of the world, then the end is going to come. I think we are closer to the rapture of the church than most of us even begin to imagine. I believe it could be any day that that trumpet could sound. The dead in Christ come up out of the ground. And we which are alive and remain, he said, are going to be caught up to meet him in the air. I want to be ready. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. Because Jesus is getting ready to come. Hallelujah. And with the internet and television and radio, Perhaps the gospel has already reached those other countries. I just want to tell you, God is getting ready to come. Today would be a great day to get ready to meet him. If you aren't ready to meet him, today would be a great day for you to get ready to meet him. Amen. We are blessed today to have brother and sister Zenobia from D.C. Amen. They have recently been appointed to be um, uh, associates in missions, amen, in the country of Spain, amen, and we're excited for them, amen, one of our own going to take the gospel to the country of Spain. So I've asked them to come today and to minister to us on this All Nations Sunday, amen. Would you put your hands together and welcome them this morning in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Why don't we clap unto the Lord right now? Amen. Let's give him some praise. He's really the one who's worthy. He's the God of all nations. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you this morning. We're thankful to be a part of your kingdom today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Could the Jamaicans do that thing again where they go crazy? That was awesome. We all got to go crazy for Jesus. I think it's all right if we're a little crazy about the one who saved us, the one who redeemed us, the one who brought me out of the pit and set my feet on solid ground. I think it's all right if we're a little crazy about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hey, I'm fine doing this. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Man, what an electric spirit in here this morning. I guess it's maybe because it's All Nation Sunday. I don't know, but it's there's something happening in here this morning. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. I'm not. I'm going to say a few preliminaries before uh, I get in uh, to preach a little bit this morning, a, a short message. But um, I am thankful. To, I was thankful to be invited before I came. But now 
I feel like I'm the one who's gotten all the privilege and blessing here just being a part of what you're doing. 25 nations is amazing. You know, the whole world is afraid of one another. You watch the news, you watch the media, you listen to the things that are said on the internet, and everybody's afraid of everybody else that's not like them. But the Bible says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you whithersoever you go. And I'm glad that there is a church here in Maryland that's not afraid of different people and different colors. And they're not listening to the fear and the hate that's being pushed. But they're saying the kingdom of God is going to be the example. We're the example to the rest of the world. We're the ones who got it right. There's one race, and that's the human race. We're all one in God's eyes. We're all created equal in His eyes. And we all need Him. So I'm thankful to be here today in a place where the Spirit of God is bringing people from every tribe and every tongue together in a commonality to worship the one true living God, Jesus Christ. What a privilege. What an honor. Pastor Overton, thank you. Very much. Me and my wife are so blessed, our, our children, to be here today and to be a part of this. Um, before I go too much further, I did want to have my wife, so that you know who she is, uh, come and testify. And if you want to bring the boys up, honey, I'll make sure they don't run around the church. Amen. We already had the march, so we're going to limit it to one, all right? If they don't want to come, babe, just you come. I'll, I'll trade places with you. It's an honor to be here, Pastor Overton. We're so grateful for generosity. You've done so much for Living Hope DC Church. Um, our church in DC, we rent, and so we've been blessed. Pastor Overton has blessed us many times. We've had many prayer meetings and trainings and weddings in this place, and so we feel right at home, and we're so thankful. You all are such a blessing to us. And yes, as um, my husband has shared and Pastor Overton has shared, um, the Lord God is calling us to Spain as missionaries, but I was not, I'm not one of those people that was raised in church. In fact, when I was in eighth grade, I almost died of an uh, overdose of alcohol, drinking too much alcohol. And I said after that, I said I would never drink alcohol again. But it wasn't long until I got involved with the wrong people in high school and I continued drinking. And then that, of course, led to a downward spiral of continued other sins and self destructive behaviors. And then um, that just continued throughout my adulthood. I remember living in Texas, and I was about a mile away from the nightclub down the street where I lived. And so I didn't think much of driving there and drinking. And I didn't just have one or two. I would drink and driving home one night, and I was pulled over. And I was asked to get out of the car, and they asked me to, to take that sobriety test. And it's very fuzzy in my mind, but I knew that the police officer said, you failed. You did not pass that sobriety test. And I don't know what I said, but I remember him saying, you live right there. I was right in front of my apartment, and so he let me just go home. God had mercy on me in, in eighth grade when he kept me alive. God had mercy on me at that moment when that police officer, for whatever reason, let me go home when I failed the sobriety test. And I reached a point in my adulthood where I had been up until this time just living for myself. I was in bondage to alcohol, but then there was a, a point in my adulthood where my grandfather passed away, and within the same year, my father unexpectedly passed away, and within a few months after that, my grandmother had passed away. And God got my attention real quick with that. And he said, all the love that you're pouring into this world, you need to give me that love. The things of this world are temporary. I'm the only eternal God. And so at that moment, I just knew I needed to change. I knew I needed to stop living the way I was living, and I started to truly seek God for myself. I started to read my Bible, and I started to pray, and I started to turn away from the things I knew drinking alcohol wasn't pleasing to God because of the, the downward spiral, the, the self-destructive behaviors. I knew I needed to stop that, but I was in bondage, and I tried as best I could. It I, I tried to go into different churches. God put it in me. You need to find a church family where 
that can lead you in, in truth and righteousness. I was one of those people that Brother Kim Vogel taught about this morning that was thirsty for righteousness. I was truly thirsting for righteousness. I wanted God. I wanted to know the one true God, and I wanted to stop living in sin, but I couldn't do it myself. And I spent two years going from church to church, seeking God, trying to break free. And then one day, God led me into Living Hope D.C. Church, where Pastor and Sister Staten answered the call to Washington, D.C., and it was at Living Hope D.C. where I learned how to truly repent. It was in Living Hope D.C. where I learned that I needed to be baptized in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And a few months later, there was a missionary service, a missionary from Cameroon. Oh, it was so powerful. He preached in pidgin. Our sister, um, his wife translated into English, and then one of our sisters translated into Spanish. And the Holy Ghost was just powerful in that place. At this point, I hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But while they preached, while the preacher yet spake the word, during that service, I stood up and I lifted my hands, and I was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I spoke in tongues for the first time during that missionary service. And I remember, I remember telling one of my sisters afterwards, I don't want to do anything to mess this up. You know, I knew I had been trying so hard up until this point to live righteously and to break free from the sin. But after I was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, the thought of drinking alcohol made me sick. I had no tempt. It was no longer a temptation before that point. Uh, it, it was it was my flesh trying to resist it, but then now I had the power of the Holy Ghost living in me, and it just was no longer a temptation. I have done nothing but do everything I do to please the one true God, Jesus Christ, and I'm so thankful that that same power that lives in me can deliver, can heal, can save today, and no matter what our native language is, whether it's Tagalog or Singalese or Pidgin or Spanish or French. God has given us one single universal language through the power of the Holy Ghost. When we pray in tongues, we are united as a church. We speak in the one heavenly language, and that's the same power that we're going to take with us to Barcelona, Spain, because somebody there is in bondage. Somebody there is thirsty for righteousness, and God's going to open doors for us in Barcelona, Spain. And I know we've met those people in D.C. that are thirsting for righteousness. There are people here in Beltsville, Maryland that are thirsting for righteousness. And if you have the gift of that Holy Spirit, do not be bold. Do not turn away. Continue to move forward and preach the gospel to all ends of the earth, whether it be Beltsville, D.C., Barcelona, Spain. There are people that are thirsting for that righteousness. And we're just thankful to be here with our family and united in that one Holy Spirit. And if you have not been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, today is your day. Because, oh, it is here. It is here. God is here. And today is your day. If you have not been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, it can break chains. It can deliver you from alcohol. It can deliver you from depression. It can heal. And it will save you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You guys are going to find out my wife is a better preacher than I am. I'm so thankful for my wife. She, I call her my secret weapon. She's a soul winner. She's a Bible study teacher. And a big important part, she speaks Spanish. Amen. <laughs> so when we go to Spain, someone's going to know what to do. Amen. I'm thankful for my wife and our two boys, Benaya and Xander. I'm glad they're here this morning with us. We love them. They're energetic little bundles of energy. I came to uh, D.C. immediately after I received my doctorate in nuclear engineering from the University of Wisconsin. I thought I was coming to D.C. for a job, and I now know I was coming for a Jerry. I mean no disrespect, but a Pastor Jerry Staten. I believe that though I had my own plans and that I had my own thoughts, God had a different plan for me. And God had to connect me with a man of God who could speak into my life and give me some sort of direction. And so for the last nine years, 
uh, both my wife and I, about the same time we met in Living Hope. Uh, we were married at Living Hope. Amen. We, we managed to have our children in the hospital. We did that correctly. But everything else, our life has been built at Living Hope with uh, Pastor and Sister State, and we're just very thankful for them. But in uh, 2017, I went to General Conference, coming up in just a, a week or so here. And at, on the last night, man, I almost made it out of there unscathed. The last night, though, I went up to that altar, and God spoke to me. And he said, you are going to lay down your career for ministry. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody. You don't have to lay down your career to be a minister of the gospel. But that is what God was calling me to do. And so I fought with God. And I struggled in that prayer. It was gut-wrenching. And I said, I have worked for this for 18 years. And you want me to lay it down for something I'm unqualified for? As the teacher said this morning, I don't know how to do it. And you want me to lay down everything for that. Well, God's a persuasive, persuasive. <laughs> I wrestled with him and I lost. And the next day I got on a plane to fly back and I sat next to this elderly couple. And we just got to talking. I was sitting in the window seat and they were in the aisle seat. And uh, we were talking, and I asked them, I said, so uh, they were talking a lot about their son. I said, so what does your son do? And they said, well, he's a minister. I said, well, that's wonderful. I just came from a minister's conference. I'm a minister at our church. And they said, well, you know, he's not always been a minister. He just laid down a very lucrative career in sales so that he could assume a pastorate. And about this time, I mean, this is... 12 hours later, I'm like, how do I get out of this seat into another seat? But God was trying to get my attention. What you heard was me. Amen. And so we began to pursue things. We began to uh, pursue a license, a, a general license. And I told Pastor Staten, I got to do something to pursue the call of God that's on my life. And then last year, we went to General Conference again. And this is the greatest plot twist of our lives. God called us to the foreign mission field, to Spain. We didn't know that at the time, but we both went up and we felt God speaking to us and saying, it's not going to even be at Washington, D.C. That's what we thought. We were thinking we were going to start our daughter work and minister here alongside Pastor Staten. But he said it's going to be the foreign field. Two weeks later, we didn't know it. Pastor had scheduled missionaries to Spain to be with us for All Nations Sunday. Amen. God knows what he's doing. God's always in control. So I don't know. Maybe one of you are feeling a call of God in your life today. Maybe you've been feeling it for a while. And maybe it's to the foreign mission field. Only God knows. But maybe I hope today, just through this short testimony, you will have the courage to pursue the call of God on your life. There's a lot of reasons that I should not go to Spain. A lot. But there's 49 million reasons there that I should. 49 million people in that country that need to hear that Jesus is the only Savior. That Jesus is the only way out of their problems and their circumstance and out of the life that they're living. Amen. So God confirmed our calling to Spain. We went there in May. They, the missionaries said, well, if you really think this is God, then come and try it out. So we did. And God confirmed that calling to us. And um, we have been since making preparations. We were recently approved as aimers or associates in missions to the country of uh, Spain. We'll be working in Barcelona for a year, or as they say, Barcelona. Amen. And uh, we'll be working there for a year under Nathan and Tanya Herod, working alongside them. And so we're very excited about it. And um, I know that uh, we are trying to raise support right now. And if after this, you decide that God laid it on your heart to support us. I'd ask you 
to please see your pastor, and you can talk to him about that. Amen? Amen. Do we all still feel the Holy Ghost in this place? Praise God. Praise God. Now, can you see me over there, over these flags? I'm a pretty short guy. I just want to make sure you can see me. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you stand with me? We have the express privilege. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Of uh, being able to preach the word of the Lord to you this morning for just a few minutes. And uh, we're going to be in the book of Mark. We're going to begin with chap or chapter 5, reading verses 22 through 24. And we'll read a couple other verses as well. Mark chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. Then we'll skip down and we'll read 35 and 36 and just a few more. I'll get you back seated. Anybody believe in Jesus this morning? At the end, that's all you need. If you can believe in him, nothing's impossible. Mark chapter 5, verse 22, it says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Verse 23, And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death, I pray thee. Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, in the intervening verses, we won't read this, but in verse 35, we'll skip down to verse 35. In the intervening verses, the woman with the issue of blood came and um, interrupted the scene to receive her healing. Maybe some of us have heard that story. We'll talk about it a little bit today. But in verse 35, it said, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler, I'm sorry, I missed my place. Yes, there, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. In verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn after he had put out everybody out of the room where this dead little girl laid and said, she's just sleeping. And in verse 40, he says, it, it says, they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth into where the damsel was lying. And in 41, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, to lift I Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Amen. 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 I want to talk to us for a little bit this morning about this thought. Be not afraid, only believe. If you're going to believe God with me, if you're going to have the courage to believe Jesus Christ with me, why don't you raise your hands right now? We're just going to pray for one second. Lord Jesus. Lord, right now, in your name, I bind every spirit of unbelief. I bind every spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus. I lose the gift of the Holy Ghost in this place. I lose miracles. I lose healing. I lose deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I break every bondage and I break every chain with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe God's going to do it, why don't you clap your hands unto him as you're seated? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Twelve years ago, I connected with a man who has meant so much to my life. In my younger years, our relationship budded and grew. But shortly after I had shipped off to college, we fell out of contact. It seems like one day I managed to wake up and I found myself in a prison. Alcohol, perversion, depression, and depravity formed the walls of my prison. For five years, 
I searched for my fulfillment in glass bottles and tin cans, hoping that my peers would accept me. When depression had pulled me to my lowest low, this man began to calm me. Our talks were often very short. Mostly I just listened. Occasionally I'd have enough feeling to say something back to him. Yet from these very small conversations with this man, I became aware of the shambles that my life was in. After several months of this, my friend finally convinced me to get together with him. In fact, he compelled me to spend an entire weekend with him at a men's retreat that would forever change my life. Hour after hour, this man poured his love into my life, and I felt the walls of my prison melt away. My life was forever changed at that men's retreat 12 years ago. Overwhelmed with gratitude, I committed to this man that I would maintain our rediscovered friendship. And I'm glad to say that today I have kept that to the best of my ability. Amen. One might ask, why give such loyalty to one man? Because he wasn't just any man. He is the man that sent me free from my prison. That day, I finally found the courage to put my faith in the man from Galilee. The man who is called Jesus Christ, the Nazarite. And when I did that, my life was forever changed. I wonder if we today can find the courage to put our faith in this man called Jesus. I'm not telling this story to trick anybody today. It's actually 100% true. But to make it personal, I want to make this personal for us today. I want us to feel it. Too often, we perceive God as far and distant. And we know that Jesus was and is God. But he also became a man to save us. The writer of Hebrews proclaims, That he had to be like his brothers and sisters in every way. Somebody say, that's me. Now turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. We were his brothers and sisters. So that he could become a merciful and a faithful high priest. Today he remains the God man. Theologians call this his dual nature. Fully God. Yet somehow, fully man. We perceive him as disconnected from the needs of our daily lives. But not this Jesus. The writer of Hebrews continues. We don't have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our weaknesses. But one who has been tempted every way. Like as we have been. Yet without sin. I'm here to tell somebody today. That Jesus Christ cares about you. Jesus Christ cares about your sickness. About your weakness. About your infirmities. Jesus even cares about your bills. Amen. He cares about us. No matter how far we think we are from God, no matter how unworthy we feel we are, none of us are beyond the reach of this man called Jesus. He is able to reach to the lowest low and pull us up. Unlike others that offer us love and sympathy, Jesus has the power to do something about it. I thank God for the church. I thank God for the good Samaritans of life who offer us compassion and kindness and generosity. They comfort us and they do help us. But there are some situations that only the man Jesus can fix. Amen. There are some prisons that need to be pried open by angels' hands. Sometimes we need to touch this man, Jesus. Nothing else is going to do but a touch from the master himself. 
Hallelujah. Three of the four Gospels record the story of Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. Both were victims of desperate circumstances. And apart from Jesus, they had no hope. We've heard a lot about the woman with the issue of blood. And so today, I'm asking us to put ourselves in Jairus' shoes. Through Jairus, I want to persuade us that none of us are beyond the love of God to reach for us. And none of us are beyond the ability of God to save us. And I want to challenge us again today to put down our fears, to put down our doubts, and to have courage to put our faith in Jesus Christ. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with. Amen? If you will do that with me, why don't you just lift your hands right now? I want to deliver a good message today. But more than that, I want somebody to be touched by Jesus Christ. The most important thing is that you leave here having touched Jesus. We with children will understand that Jairus must have felt extraordinary stress. He dropped to Jesus' feet and the scripture just says he besought him greatly. Desperation and terror must have gripped this man. Just 12 years old, she was his only child. According to Jewish culture, she was transitioning into adulthood. She had her whole life ahead of her. And she was dying. Now I think I can relate just a little bit with Jairus this morning. See my son, I once had to rush him to the emergency room. After he fell into what's known as anaphylactic shock. Because of one of his food allergies. That we have prayed and God is healing in Jesus name. But scared senseless, I prayed like I've never prayed before. It happened at church, and we rushed him out of church. We rushed him to the car, and we rushed him down the streets of D.C. Can I tell you I wasn't obeying any traffic laws that day? Can I tell you that every stoplight I just blew right through, and every car just seemed like a hindrance because I knew that I had to get to a man. That man was a doctor. Now, you can count me less spiritual for that, but I knew that a doctor could help my son. So I said, I don't care what I've got to do, but i got to get to this doctor. My son's life may depend on it. Now, I'm telling us the whole world is searching for somebody who can help them in their circumstance. The whole world is searching. Who can help me? They turn to psychologists. They turn to medicine. They're looking for a drug or a dose or a new career. But none of that is able to help them in their situation. Those are the noble vices. We could talk about a baser sort. Addiction, alcohol, drugs. Some rush to those as well. Jairus and the woman didn't have the luxury of a modern emergency room. They couldn't turn to modern medicine. They needed Jesus. They needed the way maker. They needed the great physician. Amen. I'll tell you that religion is not the answer for the world today. If religion could have helped anybody, it certainly should have been Jairus. The Bible says that he was a ruler of the synagogue. Well, thank you very much. I'm the top man. He didn't just go to church. He ran the church. But his position had no answer for his daughter's sickness. Religious right is not going to help you when you are in a dire situation or a dire circumstance. And it doesn't matter if you're in a Catholic church or a Baptist church or an apostolic church. 
you got to let go of religious tradition and get a hold of Jesus Christ. I'm not against religion. I'm a minister. I better not be against it. I am religious about going to church. I am religious about going to our home groups. We don't have midweek study. We have home groups. And I know you have growth groups here. I'm religious about my personal devotions of prayer and fasting and Bible reading. But there are some times when my healing and my deliverance is beyond what those things can provide. And I need to get a hold of Jesus. I'm glad we have 911 and I'm glad we have religion, but sometimes we need Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today that you are in a place that offers you more than religion? I know Pastor Overton and I know this church. There's more than religion here today. There's more than empty ritual here today. There is a living God here today. Who is able to help you out of your circumstance. Matthew 11 and 28 reads like this in one translation. Come to me all you who are weary and carry a heavy burden. And I will give you rest. Ever feel like you're carrying a heavy burden? We need to take that to Jesus. It says he'll give us rest. It says he'll keep us. It'll help us. And I'm telling you, if you are here today, under the sound of my voice, you are halfway to your victory. You are in a place where you can reach out and you can touch Jesus Christ. You are in a place where you can get a hold of Almighty God and he can turn your situation around. Sometimes half of our struggle is getting to someone who can help. But if we're here today, we're already where the man is. Because it's football season, I'll just say he's the man. He's the man. Now, as I was praying I, I, about today, I felt like maybe there were spirits of resistance that have attacked many of our minds that try and keep us From reaching for Jesus. That there are voices. That whisper to us. And say. No don't do that. You're just going to get hurt doing that. Or that's not the answer for what you need. But I feel that God today. Wants to break. That spiritual resistance over our minds. And he wants to loose us. In liberty. To connect with the living God. To connect with Jesus Christ. Where you are, would you just raise your hands right now? If that's you, maybe, I I mean, I got a little bit more to go. But maybe that's you. Maybe the devil's been attacking your mind this morning. Maybe he's been attacking your mind for a long time. But God sent me here, I know for this purpose, is to break the power of that spiritual resistance over your mind. You are in a place where you can get help. You are in a place where the real true living God is. And you are not beyond his reach. Keep your hands lifted. I know it's a little bit long. I'm going to pray again. I know we pray. But I want the Holy Ghost to touch somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, if you want to put your hand on your own head, maybe you need to loose your own mind. I rebuke every spiritual resistance over the mind right now. Every oppression, every depression that has hindered your people, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I break it. When you feel God begin to start giving you the victory, just clap your hands. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 
God is just trying to prepare us what's worth going to happen in a few minutes. We need to have our minds free. We need to have our minds clear. We need to be able to focus on God. We need to get all that junk that the world tries to inject in us. Get it out of our minds. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That is good news. That's what we need to be focused on. In my last little bit here before we have our altar call, I want to talk to us about letting Jesus answer for himself. As Jesus walked with Jairus, the crowd practically suffocated them. And I think that in Jairus' heart, hope began to spring a little bit. Oh, Jesus is coming with me. She's going to be healed. She's going to be healed. But suddenly, the crowd stops. And Jairus can't move anymore. Everybody's looking at Jesus, and he's talking to somebody. And if I'm Jairus, I'm wondering, who is he talking to? I thought we were on the way to heal my sick, dying daughter. Did he forget? And so he's looking and Jesus is asking his disciples, who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? Who touched them? And he asks his, asks his disciples this twice. And I think the first time his disciples just tried to, you know, kick it under the rug a little bit. Hey, I, I have no way of knowing who touched you, Lord. Let's just move on and do what we were doing. But Jesus knew that somebody had touched him in a different way. Ancient medicine had failed the woman for 12 years, and she'd only gotten worse. But she knew if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And she was. Now, Jesus didn't feel or see a physical touch. He just felt virtue flow out of him because somebody had reached out a hand in faith now when we reach out our hands in faith the power of God is going to begin to flow it's almost involuntary when God sees faith he's like he goes he works He moves. And if we can reach out our hands in faith today and let some virtue flow out of us, we will see the power of God manifest in our lives. The church is unstoppable. Imagine what we could do if we realized the virtue that was in us. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Spirit of God inside of us. We have His virtue. And when we reach out and touch somebody who has faith, that virtue is going to flow. And it's going to bless their life. It's going to heal their body. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not the preacher. Not the guest preacher. But you and you and you and me. If you've got the Holy Ghost and you believe, signs and wonders are going to follow you around. Because God responds to our faith. While Jesus spake to the woman, Jairus' servant came and he broke the news to Jairus. He says in verse 35, he says, your daughter is dead. Why why are you troubling the master anymore? Look look at these people, Jairus. Look at all these people that need the help of Jesus. Maybe he can still help them. But your situation, Jairus, is dead. Jairus, it's over. Jairus, it's over. Let him help somebody who can still be helped. But your situation, Jairus, is over. He must have been crushed. This was his little girl, and she was dead. 
And too often, we make a huge effort to get to Jesus and to finally reach out to him. But then the voice of fear and doubt speaks to us and says, yeah, but your situation's too bad. Your sickness is too bad. Your sin is too great for him to forgive. We conclude, like the servant of Jairus, that our need no longer warrants his attention. And that he's no longer interested because we are in a dead situation. And Satan whispers and he said, there is a time when you had a chance and when I had a chance. But your window of opportunity is past. Now here's what I want to know. Why are we going to let someone who hasn't invested in our lives speak into our life? When was the last time the devil did anything good for you? Why are we going to let him tell us what God can and cannot do? We need to let Jesus answer for himself. We need to let the man from Galilee Give his own answer to our situation. We can't turn to brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so who are naysayers and say God can't do that. They're no one to answer for God. You need to look to Jesus and say if you'll say it, then I'll believe that it can happen. The Bible says that as soon as Jesus heard this, he turned and said, Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. I believe it was like, drove Jesus nuts. And as soon as he heard it, he said, that's doubt. Who just said that? I am the resurrection and I am the life. And if I say the dead will be raised again. He can raise your dead situation. Hey, it's not dead. It's just taking a nap. But he is able to resurrect it. Why don't we all stand this morning? I'm coming to a close. The Spirit of God is here right now. Holy Ghost just came in right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, on the surface, it seemed like the woman's, the woman's interruption. On the surface, it seemed like that was working to his disadvantage. But the reality is, is that I think Jairus needed to see the power of God at work before he had the courage to believe. What really was working for his advantage, he thought was to his disadvantage. I think there's some of us here today who think things have worked to our disadvantage. But I believe that God has prepared today. And God has prepared us for this moment because actually it's all been working to your advantage. And God is ready to deliver, to heal, to save today. Amen. I believe that many here are ready to respond to the Holy Ghost in this place. And so I know pastors said, Pastor Overton said that I can have us come to the altar. And so I would like that everybody who's willing or has a need of God would come right now and stand up here at the front of this altar with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's many and that's good. Jesus is able to meet every single one of these needs. Jesus is able to touch every single one of us this morning. But before we pray together, there's something I always do. 
And I, that is, I repent. Before I ever get ready to minister, before I ever ask God for something, I repent. That means I bring my sins before God and I ask Him to forgive me. And so before we pray, I'm going to ask us to pray a corporate prayer of repentance. I'll lead us in prayer, and if you would, just follow after me. If you want to pray your own prayer, that's all right, too. But let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. We're going to talk to Jesus right now. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Everything I've thought, everything I've said, everything I've done, everything I've heard or seen that doesn't please you, I ask you to forgive me now in Jesus' name. Cleanse my heart. Purify my heart. Make me clean so that I can receive you again. In Jesus' name. Now, it's all right if you feel like you want to clap right now or raise your hands and thank God. I feel better. Do you feel better too? I always feel better after I repent. Now, as we begin to pray, I know there are altar ministers in this place. As we begin to pray, I'd ask for just a little bit of understanding with your need. If you would like to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, I'd like you to come over here right here where I am. If you're seeking after, just so that I know. Anybody, I'll be right here. But I want to make sure that I can identify people who specifically want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God wants to give it right here today. Amen. Amen. Now I want us to all begin to lift our hands. And I want us to think of what our situation is. And I want you to begin to pray and thank God for meeting your situation. Whether it's healing whether it's deliverance of the mind, whether it's financial, I want you to begin to thank God. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my cancer. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my diabetes. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my arthritis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering my mind. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering my mind. Thank you for freeing me from addictions to sin. Thank you, Jesus. Keep thanking them as the altar workers come and as they pray for you.
Reach over and touch somebody. Let's pray one for another this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to touch my brother. I ask you to touch my sister this morning. I pray that you would encourage them and strengthen them, God. I pray that you would meet every need that they have today. Lord, you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we think or ask. Wrap your arms around them, encourage them, and strengthen them. Lift them up today in the power of your might. Let the needs be met. Devil, you're a liar, and you're the father of every lie. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and we take power, we take dominion, we take authority this morning by the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ, be loosed and be ye set free by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Now clap your hands, raise your hands, and shout unto him. Give him some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah, Lord. I worship you. I praise you. I bless you. I magnify you. You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Greet one another. Amen.